What do you call a liberal with an IQ of 140? A foursome. Here's a guy in Washington, D.C. He probably has a fairly high IQ. He was a social teacher and he was fired 42 years ago because he was gay. His name is Jim Gaylord and he's now uh, 76 years old and he's saying, uh, Boy, oh boy, am I ever thankful now that I finally got the apology, and I think he shouldn't have got the apology. You need to be judged by the backdrop of your time. And 42 years ago, you know what? You shouldn't have been gay teaching because you were in the position of influence and the world was different. Today, the mainstream press and the liberals and all of the people carrying the signs and different things have had massive influence. They're certainly by far, they were close to being the majority of the people speaking, but they have certainly spoken the loudest. In any event, back to this, I'm digressing. You know what? You should shouldn't get an apology. You can't keep apologizing to people for what happened a hundred years ago. I'm thinking of Indians now and so many other people. John Wayne said it well. Don't apologize. That's a sign of weakness. Okay, we have a border between New Jersey and Philadelphia. Now a mother there, she's only 27 years old. She recently crossed the border. She had a concealed permit because she was fearful for her life and her well-being. Not only herself, but of her children. She had had threats and numerous other things. She carried the gun with her. She was a good shot. She's legal, cha cha. She went across the border, not so fast. She's not legal now. She was pulled over by a trooper. And as she was trained, as I've been trained, and everyone who has a concealed permit, when the policeman comes up to your car, you put your hands on the wheel and you say, hi, hi, officer, I have a firearm in the car. She did that. She was arrested. She could get three years in prison. They've got to make the concealed permits like a driver's license, like a license plate on your car, like insurance. It has to be able to cross all borders. And here, it's a mixed up thing, here being in the U.S., because every state has a different law. My concealed permits, I can only carry in about 35 states. I mean, that's bizarre. I should be able to be safe in all states. Are you telling me that I could get killed in California, but not in Utah? Hey, makes no sense at all. Here's a liberal senator. Her name is Silong. <laughs> yet. And she's a liberal and a senator. So firstly, she's dumb in all counts. Are you with me so far? And to even add to that story, here's what she's done. She's introduced a private member's bill that says boards on companies, private and public companies, and all companies that are owned by other people, not the government, now in my bill, must have representation by 40% of female. It used to be 50. She had asked for that. She watered it down to 40 because the 50 was rejected out of hand. She said, it doesn't matter if they're qualified or not. I just want to make sure that every board is represented with women because that's the way it should be. And it's really a barrier of people who don't want to share the power. So she wants to share power. It doesn't matter if the people can speak English or anything. It doesn't matter if they're dumb as a hammer, but they're female, so they qualify. Why don't you just say, if you got a pulse, you can go run a big corporation. What's wrong with you people? People. Liberalism, they drive me nuts. The Senate drives me crazy. Mike Duffy, he's out of the Senate. He's a conservative senator and he shouldn't be. He's facing 31 charges now, including bribery, fraud, and breach of trust, and so on. The biggest thing he should be facing is fraud for calling himself a conservative. Don't. He wanted so badly to be a senator. He said, anybody can have me. He lobbied the NDP, the Socialist Party. He lobbied the liberals. He lobbied everybody, finally got appointed as a conservative. He said, I'll be a conservative now because I get to be. And you know what? He's a bad guy. He's done bad things. But more than anything, he's got the wrong label on there. They should have to be stamped to the forehead what they are. You can't realistically, from a legal and constitutional perspective, reform or abolish the Senate in Canada. Virtually all the citizenry in Canada want it gone. It's just a dumb thing to have, right? But the gods say, the politicians, no, you can't. You got to keep it. Come on. Where's a good leader? Just do it. Beg for forgiveness later versus asking for approval. But no, they're not going to do that. They're just going to sit and do nothing. Don't do nothing. Do something. I know. Get all the other leaders together because they all say the same thing. Nobody wants the Senate. If the Supreme Court is fighting you, get together and say, hey, we're going to sign an agreement. No. Nobody will ever appoint a senator again. And then we're also, in addition, going to ask all the existing senators to resign. Guess what? Attrition works pretty soon. You won't have any senators. You can get it done if you try. And the people of Canada want you to try. Come out of the ether and do something. Last point today, recently the U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder, who happens to be black, said this. I suggest that opposition to myself and the president is because of our color. What a dumb thing to say. I could go on and on about that, but how dare he use a race car to manage his position. Ah! Y'all come back here tomorrow and I can scream and rant some more. Right is right and left is wrong. That'll be political. Y'all come back. See ya.